go. Today I'm going to be talking about contracting stem projectile points in river can. Now, over the years, through all my experimentation with hafting and stuff, I uh, always ran into problems with the uh, hafting of these contracting stem points because there just wasn't really much to go off of. Now, I'm up here in north central, north west central Missouri, and something I started to notice as compared to other parts of the area and south is that we find a, quite a few of these woodland, early woodland projectile points, knife blades, contracting stem up here and around in my area. And they tend to be uh, mainly found in the floodplains of the big rivers and stuff like that, but you can find them all the way up into the hills and hollers. And uh, from this area right here, like I say, they're really common. And uh, the range kind of runs and goes north and west and south and west down towards the Kansas City area. And then after that, they just kind of fizzle out. The same as when you go up into Iowa and in Nebraska, you just don't see a whole lot of the uh, contracting stem points. And uh, like I say, I had a time for years trying to figure out how to half these things. And uh, one thing I got to noticing was, was the, the base configuration on these points. They tend to have a consistency. I mean, we, we, we find it anywhere from, you know, four or five, six inches. You know, they average three, three and a half, two, two and a half, something like that. But they tend to be smaller in, in this part of the country. So I started doing some experimenting with uh, river cane. And I come up with a, a hafting technique uh, where it's a kind of a, a notch and split technique. And I take advantage of the joint node in there to seat my point against. And basically what that consists of, you saw or, or cut you a, a groove in it. And the same with the, the two notches, just make two notches, saw it a third or halfway through, and then you just snap that off. And then you're you're left with like that. Now you you distance you, you check this distance the the length of your stem and the width of your point because you're going to be cutting uh, splitting this and taking some pieces out. So in order to split this you can do this a number of ways now I either use a, a nice flake wedge and you shove it in there and it'll split and the split will come down and stop at this notch right here uh, I also sometimes use a wedge to get that to split and you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it See that split? Split it on both sides. And then most gen generally, I'll take it. I got a. I'm just using a handler tie in here, and you pop that piece out like so. And it gives you, and you look down in there and you can see the, the socket. I'll do another one of those. Doesn't seem like I ever have enough time when I'm doing these videos and I always leave stuff out. And here's one that's already been split. You can see the, the two notches. And you just flip those out. This is good actually a pretty slick trick just to show you how that's done and then of course you just take those off but you you count the thickness of your point and the length of your stem because your stem is going to seat down into the uh, base of the joint of this river cane now 
basically this is what you you end up with and then you find you a good 80 or 100 grit three piece sandstone rock laying around and you kind of shape it off and uh, I'm kind of cheating today a little bit because the wind's blowing I don't want to start no fire and burn the country down so I can find my lighter here here we go and river cane is kind of a cool deal because it kind of acts like plastic a little bit and you can heat this up and this would I heat it up over open flame to bend the kinks out of it, straighten it up and what have you but you can just add a little bit of heat down there and then bend those pieces together and it makes just a perfect slot right there to have to point in. And like I said, you can bend kinks. This has got a little bit of a bow to it. And this is just a demonstration piece, but you can heat this right in this section right here and it'll, it kind of almost like melts like plastic. And you can bend that out of there. So I've happened hundreds and hundreds of these things. And this is a, this is a seven, seven and a half, eight foot long spear shaft, river cane spear shaft right here. Uh, this is my main go-to shaft right here. And this type of haft fits so perfectly snug in there that, I mean, you could almost get by without doing anything, anything else to that. I mean, it's like hooked in there. I mean, it's snug. But I normally don't do that. I usually use a uh, pine tar resin to socket those in and even add some sinew. It doesn't, it never does hurt to, to uh, go overkill on it. Also, you can go down small. This is a, a smaller diameter piece of river cane and these things I mean they are in there without before you even glue them now on my pine resin I do it multiple ways I keep some in a this is a little pottery piece of pottery I made and I heat that up over the fire and just dip them in there and, and put them in my into my spear shafts also keep little glue sticks they're kind of handy Here's my favorite atlatl. It's made out of a buck rub, but I keep me a little stash of pine resin epoxy on the end of that, just in case. Like I say, you find a lot of these little contracting stem points. Now this could have been worked out some. Uh, here's a little doodad that's broke, and it's a type of a tool, but the the tang on it is extra small and that's something else that around my part of the country you you see is a lot of these really small tang little uh, contracting stem points and they just so happen to fit really nicely into this smaller these smaller cane shafts this here possibly a uh, exhausted blade of some sort but I mean that thing is in there so tight that I mean you could probably throw it and it'd be okay and uh, like I say you dip these in in uh, pine resin you uh, glue them in if you want to take it out you just heat it up over fire pull it out sharpen it stick it back in there and you're good to go again And I'm, like I say, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, some info here that I should be talking about. Uh, normally on my river cane, I do a socketed four shaft. Just makes sense. And I also take advantage of the, the uh, join on that too to my bottom of my four shafts socket into that and that's normally what I that's normally what I use for most of my spear shafts 
I don't have too much stuff directly to the to the end of the cane except for these contracting stem points. Now something I've noticed and this is a split piece just to show you that joint segment is that a consistency a consistency on the size and shape of a lot of the bases of these contracting stem points they don't kind of fit in there they fit absolutely perfect here's another one not kind of it's like they sat there and did that on purpose now these is authentic points right here here's here's another one here now i don't know about y'all but i think there could be a connection there Yeah, uh, I'm up here in Zone 7, up here in North Missouri, and it gets a little cooler in the winters than it does down south, like in Kentucky and south, and a lot of them southern states where the River King is really plentiful. But up around this part of the country, it, uh, it's kind of what I've seen. I've seen some that's trans, been transplanted, planted in, like from Kentucky and stuff, and, uh, you know, be here for 15, 20 years, and it, and it just appears to be stunted a little bit. I mean, it'll grow, but the diameter, actually all these shafts right here I'm, I have, uh, tend to be smaller than the stuff you get out that grows, you know, in the southern United States. Although it works, this would be about the max, maximum size, which is about a whole five-eighths of an inch in diameter. But it just so happens it, it works really well as the atlatl spears. But on average, it's it's uh, it's more on the smaller side, so which is fine. And you you get these little small shafts, you know, half inch somewhere around there, and these work these work great. You can't get them as long, so usually I have to flat fletch them up. And these are like really super high velocity, close range type spear shafts. Here's another one. This authentic point again. And this little booger is just so tight. And I have no, nothing on there yet. I mean, when I glue these in with, with uh, asphaltum or, or pine resin epoxy, man, that thing is in there and it's ready to go. Like I say, I'll wrap it with some sinew. But, you know, if I dull this thing, chip it or whatever, all I got to do is heat it up over fire and pull it out, nap it, put it back, put some more stuff on it and put it back in there. And like I say, I probably left out a whole bunch because there's a whole bunch to this. Like I say, the small stuff, as you go north, it seems to get be stunted and it's smaller in diameter. And if you go north and west of here you know like in nebraska and iowa and around in them areas uh river changes don't grow it, it can't handle the cold climate and something else i've noticed that's very important is is not only does uh you know river cane it kind of fizzles out and disappears so do the contracting stem points when you start getting away from the river cane uh, you also get away from contracting stem type points. So I'm going to do a couple more videos Stay tuned and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. I'm going to talk some more about river cane and, and uh, some other things as far as atlatl spear shaft material and that. Hope you enjoyed.